mom because she brings me somewhere and she brings me to the store. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. I forgive you. I forgive you some candy and Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love I love you, Mom, because because you care about me. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because she's holy and Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom. I love my mom because she always takes me to school and she cares about me. Happy Mother's Day. Because she cares for me, cares for me. I love my mom. Be I love my mom because she cares for me and she loves me. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. I love my mom because she does everything and she does stuff for me. I love my mom because whenever I need help with homework or something, she'll help me. because she takes care of us and she gives us whoopings when we need them. I love my mom because she cares about us and cooks for us and does a lot of things for us. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because she's always there for me. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because she always cares about me. I appreciate my mom. I'm thankful for her. I love her. I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for her. So mom, I love you. I appreciate you. I'm thankful for you. Happy Mother's Day. I'm thankful for my mom because she does a lot for me. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. I'm thankful for my mom because she brought me up in the church of God. My mom because she stayed strong and through it all, she stayed strong for all of us. Praise God. 
I'm thankful and love my mom for being there every step of my life, did a low times, high times, and for being there and putting calls on my back. And Happy Mother's Day. Thank
thank God this morning for the church of God, which is the mother of the free. Everyone who's been redeemed, we're part of the church of God. This next song, It's Not In Vain, we'd like to dedicate to all the mothers. And my heart goes out, especially this morning when I was at home, I was thinking about our single mothers who have to go it all alone. Don't have a shoulder to cry on, gotta be mother and father. We want you to know we are praying for you and we appreciate yeah, you yeah. and your labors, though they may seem like it, your labors are not in vain. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
But Charles, you can come down. Appreciate God for his goodness. We're going to read a verse of scripture. The pastor's going to also have uh, some remarks from designated. Then he's going to open it up to give remarks to mothers all over. The scripture we'll be reading is Romans 13, verse 7. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. But Charles, somebody gonna walk him? Frank is gonna walk him. Somebody need to walk him. He can do it. Okay, so you got the back wall. Stand up here, but Frank. Honor to whom honor. We're gonna honor four this morning, mothers. And we have to, you guys are gonna have to help us out. We have the oldest mother that they wanted to honor this morning. The oldest mother. So I guess we'd say, if you're a mother over 70, we're gonna ask you to stand. If you're 70 and you're a mother, please stand. If you're 70 years old and you're a mother, please stand for us. Amen. Let's acknowledge all those over 70. We appreciate them. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. All right. If you're over 80, keep standing. If you're over 80, keep standing. Whoa. You, you over 80? Over, okay. Over 85, keep standing. Well, Sister Hall, how old are you? 81. And mother, how old are you? How old, sister? Bradshaw? 86. Stand up. She gets some roses. Amen. Stand up. But Frank, give her a rose. But Frank. I'm sorry. Who over here? Sister Nice. 80. 78. Okay. So she, she got you, Sister Nice. She, she, for Frank. Yep, she get a whole thing. He's one of them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Bless her. Bless her. Amen. All right. Mother with the most children. Mother with the most children. Bless the Lord. Amen. So if you've had over eight, if you birthed over eight children, we know some parents are older and some of their children are passed on, but if you birthed over eight children, please stand. If you have birthed over eight children, please stand. Wow. Wow. Bless the Lord. Amen. Let's give them a hand for birthing over eight children. Amen. All right. If you have birthed 10, keep standing. 10, keep standing. Oh, my. Oh, my. If you have birthed over 11, keep standing. Well, Sister Hall, you get your roses this time. Sister Hall got her roses this time. Amen. She got them? All right. All right. Now we're transitioning to the mother who's attended the congregation here the longest. The mother that attended the congregation here the longest. So if you began attending this congregation before 1980, please stand. Before 1980. Wow. Amen. Amen. Before 1980, please stand. Before 1980. All right. Before 1975. Keep standing. Oh, my. Oh, look. Give him a hand. Before 1975. Wow. All right. All right. Before 1973. Keep standing. All right. Uh oh. We got. Okay. Before 1971, keep standing. So, okay, stand back. Just, when does this a hall? When is she? When does she come here? She can't remember. <laughs> okay, okay, so uh, some of those that have been here, they remember, and they said they've been a member longer than you, so. We're going to have 70, uh, she can be seated, uh, 71, stand back up, was it Sister Beavers, Sister Linda Holmes, Sister Levine, and Sister 
niece, sister Betty Goodlow, would you stand in at 71? 73, okay. So 71. Sister Levon, when did you come? 71. 71. Sister Beavers, when did you come? Well, you should have been standing up. We could have ended this long. Come on up here, Sister Beavers. Amen. But Frank, let's give Sister Beavers a rose. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord for 1968. Hey. Sister Denise, you weren't before 68, were you? 70. Okay, yep. Sister, Sister, Sister Beavers, bless you. Amen. 1968. Sister Linda, for information, when did you come, Sister Linda Holmes? 71. Amen. Amen. Bless. Amen. All right, now we got the flowers for the newest mother. Anybody have a child? If you have a child that is less than three months, please stand. Three months? Anybody three months? Oh Lord, but be <laughs> God bless you, brother. I mean, brother uh, Antoine, Amen. All right, two months. All right, oh. sister, Angela. sister Angela, bless you, sister Angela, but Frank. All right, God bless our mothers, Amen. At this time, the pastor has remarks designated. Then he's going to open it up to give remarks to all mothers. Deceased or mothers that are still here. Pastor, who do you have first? We have two or three uh, designators, uh, speakers. And after that, the, anyone in the audience who wish to have remarks, you are at liberty. But if you're more than uh, one or two people, uh, two people, then you should designate one from the family to be the spokesman. All right? So not, not everyone. So we do that. Now we'll, yeah, we, well, we could, yeah, for example. Okay. Okay. There are some of those who uh, don't have children, but they have been around that and uh, close to it. A lot of children in the home, and uh, they have done the work of a mother. So that, that'll suffice us. Okay. Well, you, you gonna move this? I'll leave it where it is. You leave it where it is. You want me to go ahead? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sister Martina, go ahead. And Sister Mary, you're next, please. And those who are going to speak, you prepare yourself. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Um, I'm very happy and pleased that a day has been set aside to honor such spectacular people, a mother. Uh, I'm going to read a couple portions of two different scriptures. One is, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above Lord. rubies. And then it goes down to the 28th verse and it says, her children arise up and call her blessed, <coughs> her husband also, and he praiseth her. And when you think of a virtuous woman, the reason it said who can find one is because it's hard to locate them. Well, to my God. They're a person that is not in the masses. She's not with any and everybody because she's guiding her home. She's guiding her home. When I think of a mother, the first word that comes to my mind is a teacher because mothers not only teach by what they say, they teach by what they do. You have us, little children, and usually the first words you say, your mother teaches you, she potty trains you, she teaches you how to walk, she teaches you so many things, and all throughout your life, that foundation came from your mother, and you make choices, you do different things, but it all boils back to your mom and what you actually saw her do and be engaged in. When I think of my own personal mother, she was quite a woman, a wife, and a mother, but my mother had a love to me that was unreal. I didn't understand love and I didn't know that love was expandable until my mother proved it and showed it. And she showed it in such an unusual way because by her having 11 children, my mother 
dealt with each one of us in 11 different ways and she poured something in us but that love we all thought we were her favorite child because of the way she loved us because of what she poured into us and that is so beautiful to think that God could create a woman that could do all of that and deal with guide her house and take others in because so many people my mother like adopted and brought in as her own not only did my mother love each one of us but she poured into us sharing with having so many children she just felt like you should learn the principle of sharing and everything. Not only sharing your time, but if you brought something in the house, a piece of candy you had to share. But she put that in us so much so that now all of us are adults, but we share with each other still. I could come in with a banana, you're going to break off a piece and give it to this one and that one. It's just how we were raised. And she taught us to care for each other in a very unusual way. And it has gone down through the generations. Our family took a family trip just recently and we were all together. And one thing that amazed me was how the grandchildren, I go back look and this one is laying on this one's lap and they're rubbing their back. I'm like, mom poured this all in us and it's going down generations. Making sure this one got their shoes on, making sure, but we're an extended family, but that care and that love that comes from a mother that built a family on a good uh, foundation. A couple other things things I want to say about a mother is she teaches her daughters the beauty and delicacies of being a virtuous woman that her father brothers and husband can be proud of she teaches not by what she says but what she does she has an unbelievable expandable ocean of love that makes each one of her children know that they're her favorite she can mend a woman give you strength, give you courage and inspiration with a kiss. A mother, the ultimate to me of God's creations. We must cherish her at all times. A mother can pray a prayer that changes you and the situation. That's a mother. Again, I'm going to just end with that, but I want to say my mom has been gone now for 10 years. I miss her more than when she first passed away. But one thing I am so grateful and so thankful of is she took the time. My mom took the time. I don't know how she found the time, but every day she took the time to pour in us a foundation that's carrying on for generations. Thank you. Thank you, Marcina. Those were beautiful words. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Um, I stand here unscripted. <laughs> um, but I want to speak from my heart. Amen. I stand here a proud mother of ten. <laughs> I stand here, I have seven boys and three girls. And I want to say this, um, when John and I were... Um, Engage. we were talking about the number of children that we wanted to have. And of course, he said two. And I said, John, we're in the church of God. You can't have two. No, I mean, you know, what, if God wants us to have two, we'll have two, but, you know. And I said, I think a good number will be five. You know, that way I might have a chance to get a girl or a boy, you know. That's what our thinking was. And so God decided I can just multiply both of y'all desires and give you 10. <laughs> and so that's my story about how we have 10. His two and my five God times and we have 10. But this week, um, I was thinking about my mom. My mother has been gone for 14 years. And it seems like yesterday. 
she was a very strong woman. Yes. Yes. I didn't know that I was going to be up here until we went up, you know, but I say, God, I want to talk about her just briefly. We all have wonderful mothers. That's how we are, mother's mother in our eyes. But my mom, I can remember her in sin. We lived in Montgomery, Alabama, and because of sin, our family was separated. But, and there was a time when we didn't stay with my mom, just briefly, but she did everything in her power to get us back, and she did. And how God led her life from the big city of Montgomery, Alabama, to the small town of Jackson, Michigan, is amazing. I told you before, we all traveled, and she was expecting what my youngest brother, on a Greyhound bus to get to Michigan. And I said, Mom, why did you do that? She said, I was trying to escape all the pollution and all the bad memories of Alabama, not knowing that you can run to the uttermost parts of the world, and sin is the problem. It's everywhere. But God led my mother here. She ran into Sister Hall, I'm not even sure how that hooked up, who led her, they decided to go to a little cottage meeting, and my mother got saved. So Hall got saved first, and my mom got saved, and we, we ended up living with the Halls for a while, all of us and all of her children. So that was fun, but you know. <laughs> but I said that to say, when Mama got saved, she did about face to the world. Right. It was so different. She stripped us of our jewelry, our pants, makeup, everything. When she heard this gospel, she picked it up. And she also told us that she was sorry that she trained us the way she did. But since God has changed her life, she has given us an opportunity for salvation. And that's the best thing ever. My mother had a faith that was unbelievable. When you're growing up, as some of you know, in a single home, you don't always have the dainties of life. You don't always, you can't always, your cabinets are not always filled to the brim and on and on. But faith brought food in the house. <laughs> faith brought shoes. Faith brought clothes. Un faith brought healing. It brought so much that we would, as children, we would gather around to see what is she going to pray down next. <laughs> you know, I thank God so much for my mother. We sang the song, Oh, Church of God, I love thy courts. My mother loved everything about it. She didn't fudge. She didn't cut across the corner. None of that. And I stand here and I say that in her honor because that's the way she was. Amen. She lived the life. And the scripture came to my mind this morning over in 3 John. And this, this is how I feel. It says, I have, I can't hardly see it, but it says, I have no greater joy to, mm -mm, Brother Lee, you got to read this because I can't see. No greater joy than to know my children. It's 3 John chapter 1 verse 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Amen. That was my mother's biggest joy. She said, I may not be here. I may be dead and gone. But you will know the truth. You may not choose it. You may not want to be here. But you will know the truth. And we know the truth. All eight of us. I am so glad that I inherited that mantle. I love the church of God. I love the women of the church of God. The scripture says Zion's women are fair. And we are. We have a beauty that's inner that shines outwardly. And I love that. When I had start having my children, my mom said, get into your children. Invest into those children. I didn't feel like that. Sometimes it was, mm-mm. You know as moms. But you know what? I love it. When I got all of that out and got 
start listening to the word and reading the word and looking around at many of the moms that are gone on now to receive their reward, I said, I want to be like them. So I asked God for a little piece of Jean, a little sister Hunt, a little sister Russell, a little sister Hampton, a little sister Mary, a sister Margaret, a little sister this one and that one and on and on. And he did that for me. And I'm here today because of the women in the church of God. I asked God, I said, Lord, I want to have that spirit of holiness. I want to have that mother that I saw and I owe it to the church of God that's what I have to say I have no greater joy of all ten of my children that they know truth and that they walk in it I am so happy to be a part of the church of God I am so happy to be able to stand here before you all and say I am a proud mother of ten because of the church of God thank you We uh, some people here now. We retire. We might do. So anyway, uh, it's now open. Pardon me. It's, yeah, it's now open, and if there, uh, if there's more than one in the family, then uh, choose one to do the uh, talking. And of course, so everybody will. We can't go too long, otherwise, you know. I um, want to appreciate my mother. Um, when I lost her, I really couldn't put it together. So I decided I was gonna keep her alive in my heart. So I just wanna say I love you, Jake. Um, I appreciate God for my wife. Uh, beautiful mother. And I wanna borrow a couple words from the anointed inspired T.O. Teasley. In one of his songs, um, in reference to my wife. Just a couple lines. All right. She's the fairest of the fair. <laughs> Nothing can with her compare. She's to me the chiefest among 10,000. And honey, I just want you just to stand up just for one minute, please. Just, just, just for one minute, honey. I know you don't want to. Love you, babe. Happy Mother's Day all to all the mamas. <laughs> I want to say that I had the privilege of um, in our families um, seven generations of us with wow. with my grandson. Uh, or with my yeah with my grandson it was seven generations of us but um, I appreciate knowing all of those grandmas and great grandmas and all that because each one have put into me what I am today my God my my great grandma you know just you hear her praying and at night time you know she might sing our father you know just to be singing her song <laughs> and then my mother she she was a hard work and all but she she just wanted you to do the housework and everything just right you had to do no sweep that floor again now get that corner over there and she was just like that and teaching you how to do those hospital fold beds and make it make those corners just right and and just you know just on and on so I appreciate having all um, our mothers and wow. some of them you know believe, like ha what has been said some of them didn't have a father in the home or their husbands in the home their, their husbands left but they had to play the two roles the double roles but you still had to do what you had to do and I appreciate knowing my mother Amen. <laughs> I gotta keep moving. Old Marine Corps. All right. All right. I haven't been to a Mother's Day service in 20 years. Yeah. Wow. My mother died February in 1998. Psalm 145, 89 says, "The Lord is gracious." Yes, sir. My mother had a great mercy. The Lord is good to all. Amen. His tender mercies are over all His work. Praise God. So I ran into somebody yesterday, and I came here. I saw him oh. to <laughs> right here, today, not 20 years. Anybody who thinks that it gets easier, it doesn't. Don't worry. Mine's 20 years out. I can still call her number and work. Wow. Only black judge and a friend of the court, 
in Michigan, appointed by Governor Milliken, was my mother. I wow. thought life was oh, great. I thought life was just supposed to be like that. Wow. When my mother died, just about to graduate from college, mm. life went like that. I thought the Marine Corps. Yes, sir. Was an officer. Yes, sir. And it was still tough. Gang ho. <laughs> Semper Fi. And I love you. And I pray for you every day. This Thank man you. right here, I love him. Thank God. Well, I have nothing else to say. Praise God. God bless you all. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. All right, children, you got it. It's, it's yours. Praise God. You say something? Oh. Okay, so I just want to um, thank God for my mother, uh, who's always been the best support anybody could ask for wow. um, through everything, through school, through relationships, through children re rearing, like through everything. And um, I was just thinking some of the qualities that I have about myself come from my mother. You know, people can attribute certain good things to being saved, but even without being saved, I learned things from my mother that have you know that I that I've done and one of those things is taking care of people like that I think that was just put in me because I learned that from my mom like anytime I seen somebody in need um, she was there like sister um, Marcina was saying you know you have that parent that just kind of takes everybody in my mom would do that and I'd be looking around like where he come from who is this well, what are they here for you eat my portion of the meal what, what do you you know but that's how my mom was she would just take people in and everybody would call her Mama Sarah and you know just even not just with children but even with um, caring for adults. Um, I remember watching my mom go through when my grandmother was sick she had cancer and, and that's what um, she passed away from but they had her come home with hospice. My mom didn't let her go to a nursing home and she just took care of her. She was by her side night and day until she passed and you know I think I, I think that stuff was instilled in me just seeing that just having a love for other people and I just want to say mom I love you and happy Mother's Day you are the best. Happy Mother's Day mom and Grandma Hall. Yes and Grandma Hall I'm so sorry Grandma Hall I love Grandma Hall she has been everything she is the best there's a prayer warrior through tough situations she just keep her head up high and we gonna pray about this and God just smooths it on out she is the rock of the family happy Mother's Day to all the moms and uh, grandma and Nana uh, happy Mother's Day to you uh, I love you and I appreciate y'all standing and I pray that you just continue to pray for me and I love you Amen. Amen. Just keep it, you know. Yeah, you don't have to be a part of it. We don't have to be a part of the congregation. If you got a mother, and you uh, appreciate that. You're not trying to catch up with what you should have done a long time ago. Hey, <laughs> God. <laughs> Okay, we want that. Where are they? Right there, right there. Oh, God bless. Amen. <laughs> um, I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mother. Um, I'm just thankful for a mother that has always prayed. A mother that's always represented the church to the fullest. That's all we've ever known, the Church of God. You know, with everything that's kind of been going on in the church, you would think, you know, seeing different ones go. My mother's still here. She's still standing. I questioned her about a lot of things because I wanted to know. You know, we as children growing up in the Church of God, we all had our questions about different things, people talking, saying different things. But my mother, one thing, and I couldn't understand it, sometimes I still don't, she didn't go into it. She said, Yvonne, that's the church business. I'm not going there. And I'm like, well, I got some questions. I want to know. You've taught me this. You've taught me that. And I want to know about this. I want to know about that. She said, I'm not going there, Yvonne. I'm not going there. And she never wavered on that stand. 
and I could respect that, you know. It wasn't, my intention when going to her was not to get gossip, but it was just I wanted to know what was going on, but my mother still just, no, no. When it came to the church, anything going on in the church, all she say is, if anything, pray about it. Don't talk about it, pray about it. And we're going to leave it with God, and we're going to leave it there. When it came to us, she didn't go and talk about us to anybody, just randomly talking about us. She prayed for us. She taught us to pray. She taught me to pray for my children. I'm not saved, but yet and still, she still teaches me to pray. Amen. To be an example, she taught my brothers. When my brother Marcel was incarcerated, all those years, my mother prayed. She was there. She stood. She never let anything come in between her and her children. No matter what I did, no matter what my brothers did, no matter what my children have done, my oldest son, you know, taking me through there, but my mother has always stood in the gap, and I can appreciate her for that. I appreciate her for being a woman, um, not just a godly woman, but an example of a woman, and how a woman should carry herself, how a woman should talk, how a woman should walk. Just everything about my mother is a woman. And I appreciate her for that. I don't think she's given the praise that she's due a lot of times because of the woman that she is. She, um, the, the mother and the, the wife that she was to my father, I can reflect on that and I'm thankful for that. You know, if I'm ever to get married, I want to be the type of wife that my mother was to my father. Wow. If I, it, every example of a woman is my mother. <laughs> If I could have the patience, the love, the submission that she has, I would be far above rubies and diamonds and pearls and everything else. If I could only be half of the woman that you are, Mama. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for the church. I'm thankful for those that have prayed for us. And I thank you, you know, Mama, for just being there. My brother got her these roses. They're lime green, her favorite color. <laughs> so we just thank you, Mama. Love you, Mama. And that's what you do. Time is of the essence here. We want as many as you to express yourself. So, time is of the essence here. So, you are at liberty if you wish at this moment. I'm grateful this morning because I was granted a 25 year extension. My mother, 25 years ago, around this time, was. They called me at work and told me she had two hours to live. And I could say a whole lot about her and her faith, but just knowing that God, I remember sitting at my desk at work and asking God, please don't take my mother. Whatever you do, don't take my mother. I said, and the doctor was trying to persuade me to talk her into the surgery or whatever, and I was like, she's strong in her faith. She is not going to do that. That is just not going to be. And I, sometimes I ask myself, why did you grant her that 25-year extension when a lot of my friend's mothers are gone? And I look at myself and I say, he did it for me because he knows how I am and what I needed. And I'm so grateful this morning because without her, I wouldn't be the woman that I am. He gave me 25 extra years and I'm so glad that I can show her. I left the church at one point and I came back and she was, while I was out there, she was still so loving and so, her love drew me back to God. And I can say that without, you know, because she never compromised her stand. I think at the time I wasn't married to my husband and we were living together and she wouldn't visit. She told me, she said, you know how I raised you. You know what I believe. I'm not visiting. And she wouldn't. And she would drop groceries at the front door or drop what I need at the front door and she would keep it moving. But 
<laughs> Sister Greta's tough. Anyway, um, she did that, but in all of that, it taught me you cannot compromise your stand for what your children want you to do. You have to stay true to your faith, stay true to what God has shown you, and that will draw them back to God. And that is what drew me back to God. And I love my mother. I am like a pit bull when it comes to her because it's like she's so giving, she's so willing to do whatever, and I'm like, no, you're not doing that. No, no, no. You too old, you're 71, stop. But she constantly tells me, I'm grown, don't tell people what I'm not going to do. I'll be like, no, you're not doing it. <laughs> and I, I just want to say, Sister Credit, I love you. You have been a, a, a prime example of a church of God mother. Bless the Lord. And you didn't get any flowers, but I want to say she is one of the ones who was the longest single mother that the Church of God has here at South Street. And for that, I praise you and I applaud you. All right. Uh, <laughs> my Lord. Uh, man, when I get up here, sometimes I'm like, now who should I? Who should I talk about first? So I'm gonna talk about my my mom first. She brought me into this world. <laughs> Try not to get choked up here, but uh, I think I get that from my dad too. <laughs> no, but uh, I appreciate my mom. Appreciate her so much. Um, I mean, she just she been there for me. You know, through through all the troubles in life, through all the ups and all the ups and all the downs, and uh, the biggest thing. One of the biggest, the biggest two things I get from my mom is her consistency with the Church of God, and that's it's a, it's amazing to me. And, and another thing is, is prayer. And I was just thinking I, this this year, this past year, um, I've been trying to make an effort to just make sure I talk to my mom in the morning. So I call her on my way to work, and like more than more than half the time, I call her. She's either praying. Or she's either just got done praying. I'm like, I'm like, man, my mom is still going at it, you know. And I've been, you know, and, and I and I think about, you know, she talked about the seven boys, and I am the oldest of the seven boys. I, I mean, she she had a stubborn stubborn group of boys, and she but she she learned how to work with us. And uh, I was just thinking about myself and all the things that, you know, I, I've done and in, in and out of life, and, and how my mom just kind of shaped me. And I think about even like having devotion devotion with the children. Like I do it after the pattern that my mom has done it with us you know and I, and I was just thinking about that I'm like man that like that's that's something I didn't have to like go somewhere and learn you know my mom taught me at home she taught me how to have a devotion you know just just watching her so I I do the same it's the same you know the same prayer the same technique that 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 we do with our children that my mom she, you know she gave to us you know and I'm never 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 gonna forget it you know she's a she's a prayer warrior that's one of the things I definitely adore about my mom so I really 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 appreciate you mom and I love you happy Mother's Day um, happy Mother's Day mom I love you sometimes we may um disagree about the kitchen but um, I love you mom thank you so much for teaching me how to be a lady um, the laughs and even our therapy sessions our shopping sessions I love you and I appreciate you now to my wife I just wanted to finish off a scripture the sister Marcina read and uh, I talk about my wife a lot. Uh, I told her, told her this morning. I felt, I felt like God. You know, they they say Adam or Eve came from Adam, and I really feel like my wife came from my side. Like she, she complete me in everything. Every, I mean, she just, she just completes me. When I can't figure out something, she, she figured figure it out. And I don't got the words to say. She, she got the words to say. She, she complete me in everything. But I wanted to say this and I, I, I talk about her at work all the time I tell like I'm like y'all ain't got nothing on my wife when they they in the break room they talking about their wives blah 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 I will I will stand up and be like hey I have the best wife in here and I can say that confidently I do have the best wife in here and I just wanted to complete the scripture the sister Marcina didn't do and I think it's for this purpose Proverbs 31 29 <laughs> Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou 
Excellus them all. That's my wife. Good. Good. Yes. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Amen. All right. Some of the time is yours for the moment. I, I'd be remiss and almost almost sinful if I didn't get up here to say talk about the the mother for my children that God gave me and the mother God gave me personally. So I'm talking about my mom first, then from that I'll go into my wife. My mother raised me up here, Church of God, the principal of the Church of God, but not only just in the Church of God did my mother raise me, my mother raised me that, listen, the, the best thing in life you could ever do is to be saved. She taught me that. My God. But she also taught me that if you're not, you don't have to be with the base of the base. There are certain principles that you can hold that will at some point allow you to get back to your roots. So now here I am at 50 years old with a wife and family of my own. There are some things that's just so clear to me as day, regardless of where I'm at, I don't have to do that because my mother taught me that's not necessary. My mother taught me growing up, we had, we had a, a challenging childhood, my sister and I, Levine. The rest of them, they really don't, don't, they don't really don't know about it. They think they do, but they don't. But anyway, she, she taught me that there are certain things as a man you need to do. There are certain things as a husband you need to do. I didn't always grasp those things. I didn't always know what she meant. But as I got older, as I, as I got married, all of those things that she instilled in me, Help me become anything that I am today. They, 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 they allow me to, to know how to treat my wife. How, how, how do I talk to my wife? How do I respond when things are negative? How do I deal with situations that I really don't know how to deal with? My mother taught me that just being a man, you, you do what you need to do. And she, she supported me in, in everything. My mother went to, a lot of people don't know, but my mom, she went to Savannah State College. She met my dad there. He was, he was just like he is right now. It's my dad. We love him, love him to death, but that's my dad. She met him and she was attracted to him. You know, he was this nice looking guy and everything. But my mom, she, she talked about, talked to me about education. She talked to me about your family. She talked to me about, about being a dad. All of those things that she taught me, along with the principles of the Church of God and, and how you should to conduct yourself, are instilled deeply in, in me. I mean, to the point of, as a grown man, sometimes I'm thinking, man, how come I just can't do that? <laughs> and if I did that, I, I probably could, could, could get up, but you know what? It's instilled in me that that's not what you do. Amen. She instilled in me that if I get married and I break that trust and that relationship with my wife, my mom instilled to me that that cannot be healed. That cannot be fixed. If you may forgive you, you may go on, but that breach has been there. That's been instilled to me. So, and, and, and as I got older and I began to, to look for a wife, a lot of the things that my mother had, I was able to find in, in my own wife. And what I mean by that is that her, 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 my wife is like this, and we'll, we'll go around about different things, but if it's a principle, if it's something she believes is a principle, she, my wife is going to hold to that. That's how my mother was. I'll never forget one time there was, there was a big party going on after school at Jackson High School. And I, I was a young man, you know, 15, 16 years old. I'm like, Mom, I would go to this party. Sister so-and-so, son, sister so-and-so. My mom like, I, I don't worship God for sister so-and-so. You're not going. You're not going. And there's some kind of way I snuck and I got to that party. And I'll never forget Mr. Bobby Tompkins. Bobby Tompkins was the principal, and he was walking through just checking IDs, checking IDs, checking IDs. And he came up to my ID, and he looked at it, and he stopped. And he looked at me, and the look he gave me let me know, boy, you better get up out of here. He, 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 didn't, he didn't really say anything, but that look that he gave me was instilled to me. Well, my wife, a lot of those principles, a lot of the same thing, regardless of, of anything that's going on or on or around her, as my son Terrell said, she, she, she's a fervent, she's a fervent prayer warrior. She, she's, she's been an outstanding mother, more than you can even grasp right here. A lot of people see 
outside accolades and success that either myself or my children or somebody may have, they don't understand how all of that is, is bred in, in my home. They don't understand any, any successes that I have. I mean, my wife, being a mother to 10 children, stand up with me late at night to go back to college at 30 something years old and finish when I'm sleepy two o'clock in the morning reading lectures to me two o'clock in the morning helping me read and study that, that that's that's what I married oh my God. so and, and I applaud you even for my children so, so they can see I like my son Terrell with the second best wife in here I applaud him for that I applaud, I applaud him for that in, 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 in his selection but I just, I just want to say to, to, my, to, my, to my wife and, and the mother of our 10 of my children, first of all, having 10 children was not my plan. I know she mentioned that when she was speaking. That was not a part of my plan at all. There's no way ever in my life that I think that I wanted 10 children. That was not a part of my plan. But every, every single time, she, she, was, she, was, she, was, she was just right there. And on the end, on the very last child that we had, uh, my wife was in labor for, for three days, so she went and she, she was stuck at like seven from like Sunday to Wednesday. And Dr. Uh, Pasquarelli, I think his name was, he came to me and he said, listen, you're going to lose one or the other. I'm like, okay, that's like not an option. <laughs> that's not an option. If I'm going to lose one, I know who the one's got to be. And I'm, I'm glad my son uh, Chunky is around, but if there's going to be a decision to be made, we knew that decision going to be. But what's more important to me, my mother had just passed. Her mother had just passed, and I, I went to Brother Hampton. I said, Brother I can't take your L right now. <laughs> ah, you get together, it ain't gonna happen to real. I know what you're looking for, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> but anyway, I went to him, I let him know. And Brother Hampton prayed, and my son was born on that Wednesday. And I told my wife, I said, hey, that's it. Yeah. That's it. She's like, what are you talking? I said, no, that's it. She's trying to stop me from talking right now. I said, that's it. Because the, I was in the, the point of losing my wife and my child. But my, my, my wife and my, my, and my mother, she was willing to have more kids. I'm like, wait, this, this is, you know. But she, she, she's such a great mother. She, she does things. You know, even if you think about with my sons and all of them, you know, they play ball, whatever they've done. There's not a time, one, not one of them to this day. I going into a, a basketball football game, football game, whatever, without making that call, without making that call to their mom. You know, either dad's gonna be there to support you, dad's gonna be there, but mom, uh, about to go into this thing, or time to pray. That, that's what they do. Not not one single time do I take a trip on the road where my wife is not. Hey, let's get let's get together, get together, and, and have prayer for us. So I just want to say to to my wife Mary, she she's been a model example of, of what a mother should be, a model example of what a what a wife what a wife should be. To to all of my children, I'm I'm very proud of their success, but I understand that it comes that it starts with. Uh, if, I, if I've never made but one good decision in my life, and I always say this. That was my good decision. Amen. That was my good decision. That I have no regrets. No regrets. Yeah. Very proud of my wife. I, I love you. Love you to death. We ask you, to ask, you to ask all of you to keep me in prayers. And to my wife, Happy Mother's Day. And to a lot, there's a lot of other people here that had a lot to do with my life. I start calling names. I'm gonna forget somebody out. But Happy Mother's Day to all. I, I, I love. I love the Church of God. I love the mothers here. I love how you all. You know, they, they still hold me accountable. You know, I got a text from Brother King in uh, Springfield, Ohio today. Hey, don't forget the way your mother. Raise you. Those things mean a lot to me. We appreciate you all. Sister, Sister Hampton, I was telling right now a little saying, Sister Hampton, uh, everything has a place. Put everything in its place. I, I remember those little things. Are so many people had a lot of uh, just different influence. I remember Sister Betty Goodlow standing at her house, just just eating when I take. She's fed me. She still feeds me right now. She makes some biscuits or something. But and so many of you all here, we appreciate you. Happy Mother's Day to you all. We love you all. I appreciate you. All right, we got a couple more here, so you are, you are, you may come. Thank you, God. Happy Mother's Day. I just want to say um, I thank the Lord for my mother. Um, I thank God how I got saved, and I recall when she, when I was a little girl, 12 years old, she told me and my twin that God created us for a reason, that we have a purpose. I'm just emotional today. 
Today is Keith's birthday, too. He would have been 50. But I just want to thank God how my mom, she was, she's been there for me. And I thank God even when I was um, a young girl. I, I said... I would want my mom to live with us, would live with me if, you know, when she got older, whatever, and how God worked that out. And my mom lives with me, and I appreciate that. And sometimes we do butt heads, whatever, but she's always there for me. She's there for the children. She's a great grandma. She teaches them their, um, their, their, the, you know, when they're little, to pre, uh, ABCs, yeah, all that for, for when they go to um, school. And I just want to thank God that, you know, she's still living. <laughs> and then yeah. something Brother Lee said yesterday at the funeral, how we have to requite our parents when we get older, you know, taking care of them and, you know, doing things for them that, you know, they did for us when we were, you know, younger. And that just really, just really resonated with me in a greater way because I know that, but it's like my mom, she's got handicaps. And it's like, well, either you better do more for her while she's yet living, you know. And I just appreciate that. And um, I thank God that he blessed me to be a mother. You know, that was one of my childhood dreams, to be a mother, to be a wife, you know. And when I was little, I said, you know, I wanted to have ten children. And I have nine, but I have a son-in-law, so he makes my ten. I just want to thank God how, to me, that's the highest calling. And, you know, um, I never thought I would be, you know, in this place, but... God has really helped us and he's sustaining us and I thank God for my son because he stepped up tremendously you know my girls they moved to um, one is in Georgia one is in California but my son you know after my husband passed he was like mom you want to move you want me to move back home I said no son you going with your life you know and I appreciate that you know and then he would come home um, or come um, every night you know and check on us and make sure everything was okay and it's like I appreciate that and you know just little things like that that mean so much you know it's, it's God has been so good to me and it's like Lord just help me to just re re you know figure this out you know it's, it's, it's no joke you know but I can do it